Fantastic. What we'll see today this, in this second section is the technical area. And like I said, we'll dive right into the abyss of technology with our resident genius, our resident guru, Peter. Peter has a number of years of experience as a software developer. He does have a knack for finding those things that need to be done and coming up with that creative creative juice that allows the right solution to be presented to the right the, the right problem. And what I'm going to do is hand over to Peter. Thank you, Henry. So my name is Peter Lessey. I'm the technical director for Parachute. Um, now I understand we are running a tiny bit late, so if you guys need to leave early, by all means. Um, and if you want any more questions, feel free to uh, shoot us an email after this presentation, and we'll get back to you and or tee up a meeting. If you if you do leave early, please fill in the survey and take a cup. <laughs> um, I'm going to go through uh, three things today. Um, uh, the first one is just some content modeling and the general architecture of our Fresco so you guys can get an idea from the back end what that looks like. The second one is we'll, we'll look at stream processing and actually dealing with machinery of government and integrating into external systems. So things like uh, migrating from Trim to our Fresco or maybe doing um, an integration piece with two agencies. We can look at some of the tools that we've deployed to do that previously. And lastly, we'll have a look at using that tool to do some analytics and show some reporting features off. Um, after that, we'll have some questions, so we free to answer and got, just dive into whatever you guys feel like. Um, we didn't have an opportunity to do that when Henry finished, so we'll do it then. Start off with, um, we're going to talk about the Alfresco architecture. What we have here is a bit of a layout or a view of what Alfresco looks like in the back end. Um, starting on the left, we have our Fresco share, which is the front end that um, you all saw today. So when Henry was clicking through uh, with the help of Claudia, um, that's pretty much what you were seeing. What that actually does is talk to the Alfresco repository, which is the back end. It's the brain to the operation and actually holds um, all of the, I guess, the application logic. On the right here, we have Apache Solar. Apache Solar is the search and indexing server that our Fresco uses. Um, this allows us to do fast searching, searching within documents, uh, faceting down and drilling down into, I guess, different um, search terms based on your requirements. So um, we get into a bit of that later. Um, down the bottom, we have our persistence. So we've got our SQL database, which is just the metadata, and the file system, which is the content store. So as you can see, they're actually separated out. They're decoupled so that um, any metadata is stored within a database for quick access, but the actual files are stored in the file system, so we don't actually bloat up the, the SQL database with um, arbitrary data. The file system can be like a local hard drive, or it could be a server such as Amazon S3. Um, there are a few other connectors out there as well that you can use, so you don't need to have just a local file system. You could have uh, multiple file systems connected to Alfresco using a content store selector as well, so that if you have some fast storage and some slow storage, you could actually um, use the metadata property to select which one you want to go into. Um, moving on, we'll talk a little bit more in the design aspect. Um, so the Alfresco content model, how are things represented with inside Alfresco internally? <coughs> well, everything from a file to a folder to a record um, or a person um, is represented as a node. So that's the uh, Fresco terminology we use here. Each node has a type. That type may have some aspects assigned. It may have some properties assigned. So if you think about a, a file, it's, it's always got a file name. It's always got the modif modification date. It's always got um, who created it, who last accessed it. Um, same with the folder as well. But maybe um, due to your business requirements, you may want some extra information you may actually want to be able to find your own content models and put your own constraints in there. So we'll go through that in a second to show you how to do that. Um, alongside of that, we've got aspects which are like grouping of properties that may not be um, directly correlated with the type of the document. Um, things like EXIF data from JPEGs or maybe some um, PDF information that you want, which is extra, that you, you, you don't want to apply to every type of that document. You just want that um, for certain ones. 
Um, the properties themselves don't have to be just strings. They can be dates, they can be integers, or they can be like a custom uh, a data field. Um, they can they can have um, constraints placed upon them, such as being in a list, like a drop-down list, um, uh, regular expressions, or you can have a custom constraint placed upon it. Um, all of these uh, require a deployed uh, content model, so um, that could be just an XML configuration. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll jump over into a live demo, and we'll show you how to do that with the, the uh, model manager. Um, in the new 5.1, so I'll, I'll go and jump into that now. <laughs> so here we have, once again, the um, Alfresco site. I'm logged in as the administrator, so if I uh, click into admin tools here, um, we can actually get into the back end. What we've got here, obviously, is some tools on the side. We've got the node browser here, which will allow us to actually go through and have a look at um, uh, properties of nodes in the back end. So as you can see, um, we've got the company home. You know, we can move through to sites, and then we can move through to say maybe we want to go to the RM site and have a look at that. And as you can see, every every node within our Fresco has a path. It has some properties and it has a type associated with it. Um, as you can see, there's the name of that, the uh, the title, and so on and so forth. We can create extra properties and apply that to a particular node. So I'll actually move over to the model manager now and we'll start by creating a model. So I'll put uh, Parashift as the namespace and just use demo. Prefix will be um, CFD and the name will just be Parashift Demo. We'll create that there. So what I want to do is just have an aspect so we can actually just define a few types of uh, documents um, in a list form so that when actually we use folder rules within the RM site, they get filtered into that um, particular function that they need to go in. So what we'll do is we'll go into there and we'll create a um, another aspect and we'll just call this demo aspect because I'm not very creative today. <laughs> and And then Draw that in there, um, and then we'll go in there and we'll define one property against it. We'll make this just a, um, a document type property. Define the document type. We'll leave the data type as text. Um, we'll require this as an optional, so it's not mandatory that this property is filled in on each document that has this aspect. Um, and then we'll put a list of values. So we can have a uh, few values here. We'll just start with maybe a project file. We can also have maybe a marketing file and then maybe we can have an invoice, you know, simple types of documents that we want to use. Um, and then we can just click create here. Now that we've defined that, we want actually that displayed <coughs> in the edit properties panel, which we'll get into in a sec. So what we'll do is we'll actually change that to add it as a layout. All I'm going to do is just apply the default layout here so we don't need to spend too much time on that. And that will just display this as a single type. So we'll save that now. And once that layout's been saved, we will be able to deploy this particular content model. So if we go back to, the, to here and we actually make that active. To load. There we go. So now this model is active. So if we just go to any file here and maybe we want to change it, what we do to add this extra property is we'll just go down to manage aspects and then we will add this aspect to it. And if we actually scroll down to the properties, we'll actually be able to see that we do have that document type and it's just set to none at the moment because it's not a value that's set. So if we want to go in and edit that and give this particular document a type, we can go in there and just use the drop down to actually do that there. So it could be, well, I'll just say invoice for this one. And then that could be used as a folder later on to actually um, determine whether it's a record or not. <coughs> 